They're England's daring, highly trained special mission force whose purpose is to defend human freedom against the Red Shadows and Cobra, ruthless terrorist organizations determined to rule the world. It's like G.I. Joe with an accent, familiar yet completely different. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Action Force. Action Force is a line of three and three quarter inch action figures and vehicles released by Palatoy in Europe from 1982 to 1991. It was supported by comic books, cartoons, and video games. Its mythology covered everything from military defense operations to terrestrial and space adventure, fighting for freedom wherever there's trouble. Palatoy was founded in 1935 in England as the toy division of a plastics manufacturing company called Caseloid Company. In 1966, they began producing a line of 12-inch military action figures called Action Man, utilizing G.I. Joe molds licensed from Hasbro. G.I. Joe debuted two years earlier, and Palatoy wanted to duplicate that success in England, but focused on proper English military themes. Action Man and Palatoy's other toy offerings were subsequently sold to the American food company General Mills in 1968 as they expanded their consumer products group. That is, not foodstuffs. During this period of consumer products expansion, General Mills also acquired the American company Kenner, who in 1977 acquired the license to produce Star Wars action figures and vehicles. Palatoy continued to produce 12-inch Action Man figures into the 1980s, but the market was changing. Sales of Action Man were in decline after a decade on the market, and thanks to the oil crisis of the 1970s, the price of raw materials had gone up, meaning that the plastics the toys were made from cost four times as much as they had when Action Man began. On top of that, the immediate success of Kenner's Star Wars, which Palatoy licensed outside the United States, proved that the market had changed. Star Wars helped shift the entire global action figure market towards smaller figures, making it more profitable to produce vehicles and playsets. Just like G.I. Joe's reboot as a three and three quarter inch real American hero, the creation of Action Force in 1982 shifted the brand from focusing on a singular man to a team of action operatives. The initial wave of figures featured an assortment of real world inspired military specialties and furthermore were drawn from the most popular figures of the 12 inch series. The figures were constructed like Star Wars or Fisher Price's Adventure People, five points of articulation, all with original molds. Designs were inspired by militaries all over the world, like British Commando, US Paratrooper, and German Stormtrooper. Like the Action Man figures before them, they were representational as opposed to being unique characters unto themselves. They didn't have file cards like their G.I. Joe counterparts in the US, and they didn't have a movie, TV show, or comic book series to tell their stories. That was up to you. The first assortment of Action Force also included a base playset made mostly out of cardboard, similar to the Death Star playset Palatoy had released in 1979, and vehicles like the AF-3 Jeep, the AF-5 multi-mission vehicle, and the AF-7 Deep Sea Diver platform. But at this point, Action Force was still fighting against generic enemies that weren't really represented in the line. There was no overriding mythology, no proprietary story being told. But that changed in 1983 as the Action Force troops were split into specialized forces and the Red Shadows arrived. Zed Force was Action Force's team on the ground, the SAS Force or Special Air Service was the Special Operations, the equivalent of the Navy SEALs in the United States. Q Force defended the high seas and Space Force patrolled the outer limits. The Red Shadows were the easily identifiable bad guys thanks to the stark red and black color scheme, as well as the skull and crossbones logos and the introduction of the leader of the Red Shadows forces, Baron Ironblood. Gentlemen, the world is in terrible peril from this man, Baron Ironblood, an evil genius who is determined to rule the world. These are the creatures he has created to help him. Now you must create your own action force dedicated to the Baron's downfall. Captain Campbell, you will take command of Zed Force, land-based attack troops. Captain Buckingham, the SAS, crack commando squad. Captain McLaren, Q-Force, Subaquatics, and Captain Connors, Space Force. Expect the unexpected. Where will the Baron strike next? Action Force Toys, the battle has just begun.
Some of the most imaginative, the most creative, the most strikingly unique designs from the Action Force line, from all action figures ever, were part of this new mythology. Baron Ironblood in his bucket helmet, Muton the death robot specializing in destruction and extermination of humans, Skeletron the evil skeletal robot, and Kraken the lizard man cloned into an army of Krakens. Yeah. Red Wolf. For every mystery. Look, Red Wolf is, by itself, one of the best looking action figures ever designed. But he gets into the Hall of Fame because he's the pilot of the Robo Skull, the most what the heck design of a vehicle in a good way. It's what a TIE fighter would look like if Luke Skywalker saw one while he was exposed to Scarecrow's fear gas from Batman. It is fair to say that what Palatoy was doing with Action Force was completely independent of what Hasbro was doing with G.I. Joe across the pond. Two lines born from the same source material diverged for the benefit of the entire world. However, Palatoy's relationship with Hasbro continued as Action Force Incorporated repainted G.I. Joe vehicles and figures. Snake Eyes became Stalker, Stalker became Jammer, Tripwire became Blades, Scarlet became Quarrel. Cobra Commander was used as the base for the Red Laser who operated the Laser Exterminator, which was a repainted G.I. Joe heavy attack laser. Destro was used as the base for Red Jackal who drove the Hyena, which was a repainted Cobra Hiss Tank. Licensing from Hasbro meant more vehicles and figures without having to design them from scratch. But it also meant Action Force was physically composed of two different kinds of figures, Legacy 5 POA and the new, highly articulated G.I. Joe Inherited characters. It foreshadowed the future of the Action Force line. Like G.I. Joe, the battle of good versus evil, Action Force versus the Red Shadows was partially developed through the cards on the back of the packaging that now provided character-specific details like code names and birthplaces. But more significantly, the mythology played out through a partnership with Battle Magazine, which had been in publication since 1975. Battle previously featured stories about soldiers in combat from various modern wars. In July of 1983, Battle began featuring a series of Action Force strips, then mini-comics, then the magazine itself. By October of 1983, Action Force was so popular that the magazine was renamed Battle Action Force. Despite the explosion in sales, the reinvigoration of the Action Man brand as Action Force, General Mills was still Palatoy's parent company, still calling the shots for the benefit of the overall General Mills business. And General Mills was looking for ways to make the toy business more profitable for General Mills. In 1984, Palatoy underwent a major restructuring. The 12-inch Action Man was officially canceled as a product line, which meant that a lot of people at Palatoy were no longer needed for day-to-day -day operations on Action Force. General Mills closed the design department in England, essentially leaving it with marketing and promotional responsibilities throughout Europe. Manufacturing and overall direction of the line was more and more about product licensed from Hasbro. In 1985, instead of selling its consumer products goods business, General Mills created a new company and paid stockholders with shares of that newly formed company. Kenner Parker, named after the two largest names in the bundle, Kenner and Parker Brothers, included Palatoy. However, all of the Action Force copyrights, molds, and factories were purchased by Hasbro, at which time Action Force essentially turned into a G.I. Joe repacking and distribution operation. The 1985 line of Action Force is just that, G.I. Joe products on Action Force cards. Out with the Red Shadows, in with Cobra. Jammer is now Stalker, Stalker is now Snake Eyes, Red Wolf is now Red Wolf 2, aka Wild Weasel, Baron Ironblood is now Cobra Commander, no more Zed Force, Q Force, SAS, or Space Force, just plain Action Force. In 1986, Action Force was briefly decommissioned. In 1987, Action Force returned as a continued European distribution effort for Hasbro's G.I. Joe line. Renamed Action Force International Heroes and fully returned to their United States-centric characters and origins, locked in combat with Cobra. That same year, Tonka bought Kenner Parker, including Palatoy. In 1989, Action Force International Heroes was renamed G.I. Joe the Action Force, unifying the G.I. Joe and Action Force brands as a complete package around the world. And in 1991, Hasbro bought Tonka, which included Kenner and Palatoy, and just finally renamed everything G.I. Joe. Action Force characters would return from time to time as part of G.I. Joe's extended universe. Devil's Due Productions' Rise of the Red Shadows storyline ran from 2004 to 2005. The World War III storyline ran from 2007 to 2008, both featuring the Red Shadows organization as the new threat to both G.I. Joe and Cobra. Other comics would feature appearances by Quarrel, Moondance, Hunter, and Blades as part of Special Action Force, the full name of the canon Action Force team based in England. 
Blades and the Special Action Force helicopters showed up as an exclusive at the 2009 G.I. Joe convention. Several characters, including Black Major, Dolphin, and Red Shadow's troopers were exclusives for the 2010 G.I. Joe convention. Action Force was supported by licensed merchandise of its own, but most of it was just rebranded G.I. Joe merchandise. Like the 1983 Action Man Action Force game for Atari 2600, which was just a rebrand of the G.I. Joe Cobra Strike game. Action Force International Heroes was released in 1987 for the ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64. The most notable, of course, was the G.I. Joe Real American Hero animated series retitled Action Force and, you know, otherwise shipped as is. In fact, in the series, most of the vehicles still say G.I. Joe on them. Purpose to defend human freedom against Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization. Action Force International Heroes. Action Force will dare. Action Force International Heroes. But there were two significant changes that mandela the experience depending on which side of the ocean you were on. One, due to strict regulations for children's television, Sergeant Slaughter's name was changed to Sergeant Slammer, including overdubbed dialogue to take all the slaughter out. Wait a minute, Slammer. The force have gotten careless and sloppy. Why don't you stick around and train them? Why? You've already got the best men available. No, I want you to stay and whip them into shape. Two, the Joes excuse me, action force, shout full force as their battle cry instead of Yo Joe. Several of the episodes and the G.I. Joe movie itself were released on VHS between 1987 and 1989. When Hasbro acquired the rights to Action Force, it was the end of the Battle Action Force comics. That was followed by a weekly Action Force comic produced by Marvel UK in 1987. Again, recycling G.I. Joe material, swapping logos, but also with supplemental UK exclusive short stories. It was the comics starting in Battle Action Force magazine that did the work of building up the mythology, especially explaining the transition from the Red Shadows to Cobra as the primary antagonists, but was it canon? No, it was not canon with respect to the US-based G.I. Joe stories, but hold up. It was canon with respect to the UK-based adventures. It's two different canons. That said, Action Force only made it to 1988 before being canceled. Its successor, Action Force Monthly, which printed new adventures, lasted 15 issues before also being canceled. Those new Action Force adventures were also brought back to the US as G.I. Joe European missions. It's, it's too much. There's, there's too much back and forth. Just straighten it out. Please. Action Force is gone. It's all G.I. Joe now in the U.S., internationally. In fact, the name Action Force was officially abandoned by Hasbro for anyone who wanted to buy it. And that's exactly what happened. Bobby Valla, founder of Valaverse, a new toy company, purchased the Action Force name to produce a new line of six-inch scale figures. The first figures were successfully funded through Kickstarter in November of 2019. This version of Action Force comes with its own mythology developed by Bobby Valla, who grew up a big fan of the original Action Force. He's looking to take it in a new direction, delivering the kind of detail and character development that he, as a fan, wants to see in a line with today's technology, design, and engineering. If everything goes according to plan, the first figures are due to be released late 2020, but 2020 has been less than cooperative due to the worldwide pandemic and production of anything and everything in China being delayed for an indeterminate amount of time as of this video. It is inevitable at this point, the clock is ticking, and very soon Action Force will once again return to save the day, because they never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high, they sound the battle cry, full force. Thanks for watching, please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Both Patreon and YouTube channel membership have the same exclusive content, so choose your own adventure. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you grew up with Action Force or if, like me, you didn't even know there were figures unique to Action Force until like seven years ago when you saw a Robo Skull in person for the first time at Rogue Toys in Las Vegas and it absolutely blew your mind. It's not my fault that Hasbro built a wall around the US and kept that amazing stuff out for so long. I don't know. <laughs> God.